Oh, shoot. Well, here we are. I am out with the Abrams for the first time. So I haven't ridden this yet. We pulled it out into the woods. So we're going to test it first of all. And you can see I've already got the trolley handle up. So we've got a trolley handle here. Push button. Pops out. And it does this. Gets to about there. And then you pull it again. It's all the way up. Down. And it's pretty straightforward. Probably don't need to go up much more than that. You've got the roll cage. A bit like the Sherman. Very, very similar. And it comes out the back here. So that's interesting. But it runs down to here. Rather than looping underneath the foot plate. It actually goes down to here stops there you've got the back bit here headlight looks absolutely lush obviously adjustable so you've got little allen key fittings here you can just adjust it tilt it up and back forth which is pretty neat mug guard built in thank goodness for that that's about time for that having a mug guard built in isn't it nice rear light and then you've got the charge port and usb standard usb here so two charge ports and a usb so if you still want to charge your devices off this it's something that's slowly disappearing um off wheels but this one still allows you to use the usb it came with side pads in the box so we fitted the side pads so our rule is if it doesn't come with side pads we test it um just as it is at the box no mud guard no side pads we just test it as it is at the box let's spend loads of money so foot plates are there they are spiky but also have longer patterns on it so one of the things i've noticed is creaky it's creaky. Will that disappear? Not sure. Does it affect the operation? Hmm, probably not. It's just the panels that when you squish it and get on it, it creaks. It's like an old ship. We're now going to head off. Well, I'm going to do a quick test. I'll do a little loop and I'll come back and give my first impressions, my first bit of feedback, and then we're going to head out on some trails. <laughs> right, it feels very much like the Monster, like the Monster Gen 3 on our website, available if you want a big wheel. It breaks and it turns like it looks, which is quite big, so quite slow. But don't forget, this is first time out on the old girl, so yeah, that works cool. So we will now head out onto some bigger trails, longer runs, and try some uphills, some downhills, a bit of off roady stuff, all that sort of business, and then feedback. See you in a minute. shoot whoa that was interesting so you might have caught that on camera hopefully it jolted as i came up and put a load of torque on it so it's like a what i call a motor slip um because i was putting so much leverage on it it sort of slipped briefly so we're going to try that again it recovered fine it didn't tip me off it sort of went boom and then just warned me he was like whoa you're right on the limit here so i'm going to go and try this again so steep though it really is <laughs> and rocky and rooty oh i didn't do it that time let's try this one nope nope hasn't recurred okay <sighs> right it 
hasn't recurred. Um, so, cameraman, come closer. I've got a trainee cameraman at the moment. Um, and you probably need to point it at me. That's it. We're all good. Um, so, that didn't recur. So, third time, didn't get the same problem. So, I don't know. Obviously, over talked it slightly. But we're going to head on our way now and do some little bit more trail riding and I'm going to bring it back put it on charge charge it up fully I mean it is basically fully charged and then head out and do a range test so let's get some b-roll going unboxing and range test done on the Abrams and when I first got on it I thought I'm not gonna get on with this wheel it's quite big going around corners the only other experience I've really had with it something close is the Z10 with the fact that it just wants to stay upright all the time and it's the same with this it does not want to lean over and it's a completely different technique uh, to actually be able to ride it this thing you really have to commit with the lean to get it to actually go in and that's with the standard tire that comes with it um, tires do make a difference but nonetheless the wheels big it's a big wheel uh, it's it's high up and so you could naturally get that gyroscopic effect it's a lot more work to actually twist the thing into a corner um, so if you're thinking about doing real tight figures of eights at speed not going to be for you get an m103 or something um, after about 20-ish miles, and then there's that golden rule, don't forget, about doing 50 miles on a wheel before you critique it, because it takes a while to bed in. After about 20 miles, <clears throat> I started to get into the total rhythm of it, and I actually started to enjoy riding it. The first 20, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to do a range test on this, and I've got to take it to a thousand kilometers. <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy this at all, which is fairly rare. But as I say, after 20 miles, I started to get into the sort of the, the rhythm of it, really. The light's really, really good. Um, nice and bright that adjustability on the fly if you leave it just loose enough you can move it up or down you've got multiple light modes the roll cage around that is really handy for braking now being such a big wheel of course it takes more momentum to stop the thing so throwing yourself backwards trying to brake leaning into the side pads that come with it helps massively so you definitely need some form of side pads on this because it's such a big wheel and so it comes with ones in the box of standard so as you saw in the video they are fitted so I was able to brake and you can actually help the braking process by grabbing the front of the roll cage and leaning back as hard as you can to try and yank it and it'll stop a lot quicker. So that makes a massive difference. So having that cage there is actually beneficial. <clears throat> In terms of the creaking and stuff, I'm going to the box, it does, it does creak, but you can't tell that when you're riding it at all. And it's not as bad as when I first got out of the box. It's sort of bedded in. 
and it's not as creaky now, which is good. So she's all right there. Motor noise is slightly louder than most of the motors I'm used to, because it's quite a big motor unit as well. Um, road noise is significantly less than the Sherman. So with that, it's not an off-road tire, it's like a cross-terrain tire. So it runs a lot quieter. And, the, and actually the road, the smoothness on the road is massively helped with this tire, rather than it being an off-road tire. Rear brake light and the rear day running light all being spot on, traffic can see you, irrespective of the clothes you're wearing. All of that works absolutely fine. Foot plates I found, even when it was raining, standing on them with the spikes that are built in and molded in, my feet didn't slip backwards as I tried to, because obviously you've got extra leverage because such a big wheel, trying to push the thing forward to get it going. I, I found that it wasn't slipping out at all. The screen readout is being spot on. So I haven't really found it to be lacking, whether it's in sunlight um, or in the dark, it works fine. So you can just have a look down, see what speed you're doing, see your battery, not necessarily percentage, but we battery capacity that's remaining essentially. So that's worked really, really well. And talking about that, let's go straight now to the range test. I was very surprised uh, with this. I've got 43 miles until the first beep. Now at that first beep, there was no speed restriction. It beeped. Well, not that I found. I went up to 30 miles an hour and it allowed me to do 30 um, at that speed. There was no restriction. Um, let me just check because then I got to a total, so the total range I got until it basically not rideable was 46.96. So 47 miles, which is pretty amazing for our range tests. It were always well known for being very low. Um, and I've put in a little comment, the last mile, uh, so the uh, mile 46, just below, mile 46, the foot plates were really washy because it was on its way out. And if the cameraman can just pick that up, just there we are to where it was. Um, so at about mile 46, that's essentially where it was more or less not rideable. I pushed it for an extra mile, essentially. Um, so that is a good, pleasant surprise. So what I will do, is I'll carry on riding this and report back at the 250 kilometers, 650 kilometers, and a thousand kilometers, and then report back. But at the moment, no failures. This Abrams, when the first iteration came out of the production line, didn't have great feedback. There's reports of cutouts and things. With this latest firmware, it's not sniffed. It's been absolutely fine. It's just running, yeah, no problems at all. And the mileage I got out it was really good. So, yeah, it's not the smallest wheel, as you're probably aware, but nonetheless, that mileage was pretty good. So I'm going to stick it back on charge. Try to stick some more miles on it. So comment below, share the video, and I'll see you at the 250 kilometers.